Thank you very much. Please come to the outstanding show. This was the MPP in conference. Can I see your hands up? Put your hands together for the President of the Republic and please Thank be seated. You. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vice President and the lovely Second Lady Samira Bawumia, Acting National Chairperson and National Officers the Chief of Staff and Officials of the Presidency, the Chairperson and Members of the MPP National Council of Elders, Senior Minister, Minister for Parliamentary Affairs and Leadership of the Majority in Parliament, Ministers of State, Deputy Ministers of State, Members of Parliament, Members of the National Council, regional chairpersons and regional officers, constituency chairpersons and constituency officers, members of the external branches, delegates, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very, very happy we could meet today to do the unfinished business of our annual delegates conference in Cape Coast. There the decision was made to hold this conference with a one item agenda, amendments to our constitution. But when I was coming here, I wasn't sure that I was coming to the proper place. I thought I was coming to the National Officers Election Conference, when I see all the things that are going on around here. But I want to take the opportunity to congratulate the party leadership, the national officers, especially our hard-working acting general secretary, for being able to organize this conference. With the mandate of the National Delegates Conference, the National Council set up a committee to harmonize the various amendments for easy consideration by this conference. The committee has done a good job and their work has been circulated to all of you. We're grateful to our first vice chairman, Frederick Flavia Anto, and the members of this committee for this excellent job that they have done. The work has been presented in such a manner that it should be relatively easy for us to deal with it expeditiously. Today is a sacred day in my life. It is my late mother, Yabuakwe's birthday. So I am sure that this is going to be a happy and lucky day for us. Hopefully, we're going to work in a consensual manner as befits a ruling party that won a great victory a year ago and has been in office for almost a year. A year which has been full of important achievements, which have won the admiration of the nation. We have fulfilled our free senior high school pledge. And our determination to revive the National Health Insurance Scheme and the country's agriculture. It is clear already that the program for planting for food and jobs is a success and is going to be an even greater success in the year 2018. We've also had important challenges, the invisible and delta forces, and the tensions at the grassroots of our party because over jobs. I appreciate very much the anxiety about jobs. What I'm saying is that the foundation has not been
been easy. But because of the ingenuity of the people I'm working with, we've been able to let us remain united and sprint. It is a cross country. It is a beginning. I want us to have a business-like conference and make it clear to Ghanaians that we are indeed the natural and proper work with consensus and with unity. We have agreed The first, the first is the amendment, making it impossible for dual citizens to hold party office and continue. That amendment will be a disaster for our party. It will be constitutional. I'm aware of the things to cure, but we have another manner, and that is Amendment Roman 5a at page 8 of the book. The second proposal that is going to be withdrawn and has been withdrawn is the one that gives MPs the right to appoint members of the constituency executive. I am strongly opposed to the measure and it is going to be withdrawn. The third amendment to which I am absolutely opposed is that one that is set down as motion number 85 which seeks to make the presidential candidate the president of our party the flag bearer and leader of the party. That motion is against all precedent and tradition of this party and I am going to ask for Congress to, if they will not be withdrawn, to oppose and reject it. We do not need that amendment. <coughs> Since the Cape Coast Conference, the National Council has acted to restore and preserve the stability of the party at the grassroots. And I want everybody to listen to me very carefully what I'm about to say. In the year 2000, in the year 2008, and in the year 2016, <coughs> the three times the opposition has defeated an incumbent government their victory was made easier by the breakdown in the relations between MMDCs, MPs, and constituency chairmen. <coughs> in 2000, we benefited from this. But as a result of the Swedish Declaration, there was a lot of restlessness in the NDC at the grassroots, many local conflicts. Even though the country wanted a change, it was made easier by the disruption in the NDC. The same thing happened in 2008 when the NDC took advantage of the divisions in our party at the grassroots as a result of 17 competitors for the party leadership. <coughs> Again, in 2016, the conflicts between the Mills elements, the Rawlings elements, and the <laughs> people 
helped us to our famous victory. They say people do not learn from history. We must learn from history. And that is what the National Council has done with my active support. The Council has passed a resolution banning MMDCs from competing in parliamentary primaries unless they step down three years before the election if they want to compete. <coughs> we do not need MMDCs to disturb this party at the group grassroots from their job. The council has done the same to three constituency and regional offices, the chairperson, secretary, and treasurer. This is to make the provision that binds the national chairman, general secretary, and treasurer from contesting the presidential candidature extended all the way to the regional and constituency levels. The National Council has acted to fill a gap that should not be there. I know that some people want the ban to be extended to cover all constituency and regional officers and all government appointees. This will be a radical measure that leaves the support of the conference and as on a duly passed amendment. We need to consider this in a proper manner. <coughs> I am prepared to do whatever is necessary to guarantee this victory for this party, victory after victory. But to do so, I need your active support. We are going to be able to achieve our goal, development of our nation in freedom. I'm happy to say that the party leadership has been able to make the relevant arrangements for our Christmas so that everybody <coughs> will be able to enjoy this Christmas in a modest manner. We said that the battle is the Lord's in the 2016 election. The battle is still the Lord's. Thank you. May God bless you. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's be upstanding, ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished delegates, put your hands together for the President of the Republic. Very inspiring address. I think it deserves another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Please be seated. Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer, please. Mr. President, Chairman of Conference, Distinguished Delegates, at this stage, we move on to the main business. And at this juncture, I would like to hand over the microphone to the Chairman of Conference, our Acting National Chairman, Mr. Freddie Blay, to take over and lead us through the agenda of the main session. Mr. Chairman, you are welcome. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for the chairman of the party who presides over this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you once again, Lord Kome. And as you put your hands together again for the inspiring speech by the president of the Republic, Akufuad. We thank you very much, Mr. President. Now to the main task of our meeting the consideration of the proposals for amendments of our constitution. As already indicated by the president, he is privy upon consultation that quite a few people who are sponsors of various 
amendments have indicated that because of the controversy and uh, opposition to some of well-intentioned proposals, they've indicated that they will withdraw those amendments. It makes our work easier. Please clap for yourselves again. At this juncture, I will even first start it by calling on the majority leader and uh, Minister for Presidential Effort to set the board ruling but he is indicated that there is a proposal that stands in his name. Although we are not going immediately by chronological order, but he wants to make the tension come down by first proposing that I'll do that. So please, Mr. Majority Leader, But even before he comes, as I've indicated, the way we will go about it, the MC, Lord Kome, indicated how we are going to do that. It will be the motion. We've indicated by the brochure that we sent to you that various amendments will be proposed by motion by those who are proposing them and in whose name those proposals stand. If you are here and your name is behind any proposed amendment, we we'll call on you to come and push it. If you don't, or you don't give anybody the power and the mandate to do that in your name, it means that proposal will not even be moved. We we'll pass it on. And then it means that the clauses or am amendment that you have intended to effect will not hold anymore. Mr. President, our friends from the sister political parties, we want to beg leave of us. We are coming upstage to say hi to the president and then to the party leadership so they can beg leave of us. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. The diplomatic corps has also indicated their willingness to beg leave of us. I think it's important that we put our hands together for them for being with us in this our session. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters from all other political parties. Thank you very much. Chairman. As they come, before they disturb what we're doing, I will take the opportunity to announce that the former president, President J. Kufo, could not make it today because he will have been taken a little ill. He would have loved to be here with us today. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it because indeed he had been with us at M Plaza when we were discussing the report that was brought up by the committee that considered the proposals. I will also take the opportunity to apologize on behalf of Honorable Haruna Seku, who is former chairman of the party. He has also indicated that he's been taken ill. He would have loved to be here. He wishes the conference a success. And all of you who are gathered here, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. We wish him also a very speedy recovery. Yes, Majority Leader, I'm waiting for you. Out of ten, yes, but you wanted to indicate the most controversial proposal that members would like to hear you on in the name of the parliamentary group. Mr. Chairman, 